hi welcome to the lecture 3 of a structural system which is of wind and seismic analysis so here outline of module has been already discussed and in which the above four topics has been already discussed in lecture 1 and lecture 2 so today now we are discussing about the strength and stiffness so first i'll introduce what is the strength so strength is a measure of how much stress that can be applied to an element before it deforms permanently or fracture or we can say in other terms that strength represents how much load the member can resist before it fails so strength is a measure of uh, stress that how much stress can be uh, registered by the elements before it fails and in another definition strength is called as an ability of material if we are talking in terms of material then we, it's an ability of material to be distant and applied load without getting plastically deformed or a structure so here are three definitions of a strength now there are some important definition of strength that you have to be keep into your mind one is a yield strength so as you have already studied these type of strengths in you know, your subjects uh, strength of material but uh, now again i am describing these strengths so yield strength is used in material that exhibit an elastic behavior it's the maximum tensile stress that the material can handle before going for a permanent deformation occurs so this is the yield strength another one is ultimate strength it refers to the maximum stress that can carry by a material before failures occurs so before failures the maximum strength the maximum stress which is carried by the material is called a ultimate strength and last one is the fractural strength fracture strength so fracture strength is the value corresponding to the stress at which total failure occurred so at the time of failure the stress is carried by the material is called the flexural fracture strength now from this graph you can understand that how what is the yield strength and what is the ultimate and ultimate strength of the material and what is the proportion limit so in the proportional limit the proportion is when the stress is directly proportional to strength or when the applied when the removal of applied load from the member or from the material then the material or element regain its original shape it's called a proportional limit and yield strength is before material is going for a permanent deformation permanent deformation then it is called a yield strength stress carried by the material or a element then it is called a yield strength and the maximum strength which will be carried by the material or element is called ultimate strength from this point you can see the ultimate strength which is the maximum stress carried by the element or the material and the fractured strength when the material is going to fail so from this figure it is clear that how the different different type of strengths another term is stiffness so stiffness is an indicator of the tendency of an element to return to its original from after being subjected to a force so when the force is applied the material get deformed and after the removal of that load the material regain its shape or element regain its shape its shape original shape that it's called the stiffness of that element another in a another definition it is called a, it's a measure of how much force is required to displace a building by a certain amount so that how much for a certain amount of displacement how much the force is required to applied on that building is called the stiffness in another definition stiffness is the degree to which an object resists its deformation in applied load so the when the load is applied then how much deformation is registered by the element or a material then it is called stiffness and how it represents stiffness can be expressed as follow that k is equal to f divided by delta it means for a unit displacement how much force is required k so here k is the stiffness f is the applied force and delta is the deformation so now in this picture it is showing that when there is a no load then the shape of a, a beam 
is showing by a dotted line and even after when the force is applied f is applied in this beam then beam is deflected in a downward in a downward direction and the amount of displacement is delta so the stiffness of this member of this beam is k equal to f divided by delta so what are the difference between strength and stiffness there is a lot of confusion between strength and stiffness how they are different so first one is the strength generally depends on the modulus of elasticity it means when the load is applied the structure is called get uh, deformed or displaced but after removal of that load the structure or member can regain its original shape then it is called a stiffness and strength depend on some material ill strength or its equivalent so strength depending on the ill strength and stiffness depends on the modulus of elasticity the second one difference is the stiffness refers to the amount of deformation under the applied load okay and uh, strength to represent how much load the member can resist before it falls so stiffness is the resisting of that deformation so how much the deformation can be resisted by the member due to the applied load which is called stiffness and the strength which is called strength is uh, how much load can the member resist before it falls so there are two difference between strength and stiffness and here you can uh, understand from this picture that this region is showing the stiffness of the member and this region is showing that strength of this member so strength is the load resisted by the member before it going to fail so before going to fail the load resisted by the member is this so from this region it is showing that this is the strength of that member and from this region you can see that here is a stiffness so within the elastic limit the material behavior or element behavior is known as the stiffness so this is a graph between the design lateral force which is h and lateral deformation which is delta so if the lateral force is acting on a building element or a building then how much the deformation will occur in the building element is lateral deformation and the how much is the load carried by the member before uh, failure then it is called strength so to understand the difference between strength and stiffness here i am taking an example of a uh, chalk and piece of rubber so we are considering a piece of chalk and a piece of rubber with the same cross sectional area and the same length so the dimensions of the chalk and the rubber are the same if we are trying to bend the piece of chalk it does not deform but it can break so why it is breaking due to having its low tensile strength therefore chalk is having large stiffness but low strength why because it is because it is not going for a deformation or oh, sorry or a displacement it is not going for a displacement but it's break so breaking is done breaking is done before so that it is having a low strength and the stiffness is large on the other end if the piece of rubber uh, if the same amount of load is applied on the rubber then rubber is easily bends but it does not break or fail even it is folded so therefore compared to chalk rubber is having a low stiffness but high strength because it's a bend the rubber has been going to a bend or a folded but it will not break so the load carrying capacity of that rubber before going on a fracture it is high so it is having a high strength in compared with a chalk piece now if the building material building elements or a building is subjected to any kind of load then it going to be deteriorated with the time and uh, it does not perform well when it is subjected to a uh, lateral forces or any other forces so what are the some strengthening techniques that we can adopt to improve its load carrying capacity so first one is jacketing of column we can Uh, jack, we, we can done jacketing of column to improve its load carrying capacity 
if the column has deteriorated due to a, a moisture ingress or some amount of cracks has been cracks some amount of cracks on the columns then columns strengthening can be done by jacketing we can place a wire mesh around the column and then place a concrete new new concrete on that column then the strength of concrete can be increased to its design strength second one is post tensioning of existing beams if the existing beams cannot perform well when it is subjected to a flexural load or a lateral load then how the strengthening of a existing beam can be improved so it can be improved by the post tensioning third one is the introducing the lateral load resisting element if the building is subjected to any lateral force which is a seismic force or a wind force then the building how the building can resist these type of lateral loads so we can provide a lateral load resisting element such as a shear poles we can provide around the building so that they can they so that they can resist that lateral loads and enhance its cap enhance the capacity of a building fourth one is the underpinning of footing so if the building is subjected to any kind of lateral load then it can slide it can overturn or it can slide so if the sliding of building if the sliding of building of all the building is done so to prevent this sliding we can underpinning we can done underpinning to the footing so the sliding can be prevented by this method fifth one is the local replacement of damaged concrete and steel so as the uh, as the concrete is damaged or steel is damaged then it can be replaced by uh, some new concrete or uh, some repair technologies uh, so that uh, they can they can perform well why the concrete and steel will be damaged so, so there are some failures due to a uh, shrinkage and creep or uh, corrosion will start in a concrete due to moisture ingress so that uh, the steel will start corroding and the Uh, it will not perform well so we can replace that concrete and steel by a new concrete and steel so that uh, its strength can be increased repairing cracks by injection of epoxy, epoxy ground some of the minor cracks that can be repaired by uh, some special techniques which is uh, epoxy ground which is which will set uh, soon and perform well its strength is very good so we can inject that epoxy grout into that cracks so that the building will perform well and last one is the short cutting we can done short cutting also so these are the some strengthening techniques other than there are lot of strengthening techniques that we can use so here i am listed only a seven so we can done some strengthening techniques and the building can perform well so here are some references thank you